All right, people, welcome back to another video. And this is the match reaction to Arsenal's 4-1 win at home against Crystal Palace. Stuck inside a maze, I've been up for days. Cardings on my face, no, you can't see a thing. But I see all the hate and the fake ass niggas talking in my face. But I cannot be phased, I gotta be brave. Provide for the fans so they don't have to slave. Mom told me behave, but I'm a wild out till a nigga in the grave. But I'm a wild out till a nigga in the grave. I'ma be a great yeah. No, let's just start off. But um, with the game, let's just start off with the lineup selection. I thought, um, obviously, we know Saliba is out through injury he had against um, Sporting, so we know, um, we're gonna be without Saliba this game. Um, Holding came in for the game. I was, I don't know if I was expecting to see, um, Jesus probably get him more uh, another start, but um, Arteta decided to go with Jesus on the bench. Um, and then it was just the team as usual, the standard 11 normally. What we've been running for the last couple weeks. Start on the first half. I thought first half, um, we see how the game shaped out. First, from minute one, you really saw how the game was going to go. Arsenal going to dominate possession. They were going to move the ball. The players were going to, I thought the movement of the players, I thought the first half was, I thought the first half was better than the second half, if I'm honest. First half, we were moving it well, passing it well. It was sharp. It was quick. It was fluent it was it was elegant however though we did see a few times that crystal palace will pose a threat on the counter attack zaha hit the post goes back off of ramsdale if that goes in that could be a different game palace will then enjoy sitting back and watching us um try to come at them and try to give them pressure um there was also another moment when um i think it was matata went through um, they pose a lot of um, they pose a lot of threats, but um, so the first goal from Martinelli Saka is down the right. Does a little jink, does a little move, cuts up, um, crosses it on his right, finds Martinelli on the next side of the eighteen yard box. Martinelli takes it on the left. Wonderful finish with his left foot, bottom corner. And then a few minutes later, Ben White with the immaculate through pass. The whole the whole first half we were trying to get Bakayo inside. We saw Odegaard try to do it. We saw Partey try to slip it through. We knew clearly it was a tactic by Arteta and his staff to try to go down that um, side to Saka as much as possible and try to attack Terry Mitchell. We saw him even try to go. We saw him even go down mid game with a knock. Um, so you know Saka was giving him problems all game. But second goal comes Ben White with a lovely um, through pass into Bukayo through the inside right channel. Bukayo with a nice lovely finish. And that goal took Bukayo to the first player this season with double-digit goals and assists. So congratulations to the young Bukayo Saka, 21 years old. 21 years old. What a player he already is. I've been telling y'all. Well, not y'all because I didn't have a YouTube channel. I wasn't doing YouTube back then. But from the time he broke through the team at 18, 19, as a left back, I was telling my friends from Barbados, I was telling my friends back home, this guy is the future. Of n psh, guy is talent. This guy is a wonderful talent. This guy is the future. But that was two 0 I was two 0 to the Arsenal at halftime. Um, I was very confident after the first half. I was thinking, shit, we could be two. It could be four, five, sixes. Um, this half. We come out second half. I mean, we come. We still playing pressure. Still putting on pressure again. The, the game went one way. The game really went one way. Arsenal in control. Palace trying to take their opportunities when they get it. The, the game only went one way. Going into the game, however, though, I thought this was always gonna be a banana peel. I thought this game was gonna be a banana. Going into the game, I thought this game was gonna be a banana peel because yeah, Palace just lost their manager. You never really know what could happen. So, you know, it was it was kind of a slippery one. We never were, I wasn't really too sure what to expect from this Palace team, especially just using their manager midweek, just coming off a bad result against City where I thought they should have got something out of the game. I thought they were poor that game against City. They lacked any inspiration. But I always, again, when it comes to Arsenal, I feel like everyone always pums up, puts on their best. They're always like, oh, if they didn't score, they don't score goals, watch them come and score goals now. Watch at least say who had a poor game last. I, that's what that's was my mentality going into this game. But luckily, we get the third goal. We kill it off. Granite Jacker with a lovely um a bit of fortune with the pass, a bit of a, a bit of a flicky. He's sliding going down in the ball. 
flicks it with his left foot right over the keeper. Um, a bit lucky, but we take those. And then they went on the other end. The game was starting to get a bit dicey at this point. They go down the other end, they have a corner. And again, set pieces is our undoing. This is this is a few games in a row now we've, we've been conceding from set pieces. And I, I'm, I'm not really liking it because teams that pose a bigger threat and um, a more massive threat, can, it looks like they can get at us. And I don't want, I want set pieces to be at least one where we're solid. Set pieces this season. Last year from set pieces, though. Last year from set pieces, we conceded what? We didn't concede our first set piece until, was it, was it late March? Was it probably March we conceded our first set piece? Like, I could be wrong on that stat. Do not call me on that stat. But it took us a long time last season to concede our first goal from a set piece. And I feel like right now we're conceding goals from set pieces all the time. That's why we're giving up most of our goals from set pieces. Um, So that's still something us as a team need to work on. Um, But... Let me wrap it up. Kiantini with a lovely cross into the middle into the middle of the box. And Bakaya Saka buries it for his second of the game and 12th Premier League goal this season, taking him with 12 goals and 10 assists. Now, all the plaudits are going to go to Bakaya Saka because he scored two goals. He played brilliant. He was a constant threat from minute one. He was a constant threat. But I thought the reason why we won this game is down to two players. Again, Thomas Partey and Martin Odegaard. They just ripped the soul out of this Palace team, yo. And, and there's nothing Palace could do about it. Martin Odegaard and Thomas Partey just control the tempo of the game constantly. And they, they, they don't, they, it seems like they don't lose the ball. It really seems like they never give it away. They're always composed on it. They always make the right pass. They always just have that extra level of composure before they make the decision they make. They always, they always feel like they have more time than they really do when, they, when they're on the ball. And when you watch them game after game after game after game produce at this level, it's like, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wow. And this game, I thought this game went really well for us. Again, we got the three points. We scored four goals. Yes, we couldn't keep the clean sheet. And we conceded from a set piece. But that's nitpicking at this point. I don't really want to keep harping on that. I know we need to fix it. And I know we can be better. And I think we will be better. Um... We got minutes in the legs of Jesus. Kivir got minutes. Um, Tandy got minutes. He got also got an assist, so that should do the world for his confidence. We got Jorginho in there at the end of the game. Everybody got the squad player. The French players got minutes. We also got a good win. Martinelli kept his goal scoring run going. Saka got back to um, goal scoring ways. I wanted Odegaard to get a goal, but he looked sharp as well. Partey looked sharp as well. Gabriel with a good performance. Um... Trossard with another good performance. He got the assist for the um the Xhaka goal. Xhaka played well. Thought he was dominant in the midfield. Did a lot of leap, did a lot of talking. Did a lot of communicating with the um defense and attack. Really linking the midfield along with Partey. Um, and yeah, I just thought this was an overall good game for us as Arsenal fans. This is no eight points clear, even though City have a game in hand. But as I say, as people should like to say, points on the board matters, and we have. Eight points clear on City. City now have to go and win that game. And City's next game in the league is against Liverpool. Liverpool, their own nemesis, has been giving them problems. I know Liverpool this season have not been good, but in recent years, Liverpool Man City is always a good game. So let's just hope that um, Liverpool can get the result there. And we can just keep steadfast and marching on. We do have to go to Anfield later this season. We do have to go to St. James Park. We do have more tough games to go, but 10 games left. One, we have 10 more finals to play. We only have 10 games left this season as Arsenal fans. Eight points clear. The lads can do it. The lads can really do it this time. So comment down below, guys. Let me know what you think about today's performance. Let me know who is your stand-up performer of the game. I thought my stand my, my stand up performer of the game, just because I just love how he controls the game, how he looks so effortless on the ball. I just, I, I have to give it to Partey, but... I would say I give it to Partey, but Bakayo Saka, obviously with the two goals and the Andy assist, outstanding player. You can't really fault someone that got two goals and assists. But I just thought over the course of the game, what really won us this game was Thomas Partey came with his magnificence in midfield, just controlling the ball, breaking up play, winning it back early, then dispersing it to the attacking players and getting us on the front foot when um, teams try to sit back. I just thought Thomas Partey today was absolutely outstanding again. Um... So yeah, leave your comments down below who's your uh, money of the match and 
yeah on to the next one come on you gunners